No, pole hullu, kui mind ei ole näha. <laughs> Okei. Okay. Tere õhtust. Good evening, dear friends. So I'm happy to welcome you to the uh, second lecture on, of this year, open lecture series organized by the Faculty of Architecture of the Estonian Academy of Arts. Uh, and the lecture series is supported by Cultural Endowment of Estonia. And today's lecture is part of the Future Architecture Platform 2021. Um, Future Architecture is the uh, first pan-European platform of architecture, museums, festivals, and producers bringing ideas uh, on the future of cities and architecture closer to uh, the wider public, uh, funded by European Union Creative Era Programme. Um, and if I'm looking, or we all looking, look how the numbers of COVID are getting higher again, uh, we have to continue our lecture series as long as we can. Uh, and uh, the creators Silla Pihlak and Johan Dali thought that uh, all lecture in this series of this, sem uh, of this semester revolve around the issue of healing in one way or another. So today's lecture especially look directly at the architecture created especially for landscape of care. And it's my pleasure to introduce uh, our first lecturer, Konstantin Budarin. And I have, I could say today, Tere Tulemas Eestis, because uh, uh, we know that uh, Konstantin is uh, uh, born in uh, Tartu and moved in 1990s around yeah. to, to Moscow but he's actually uh, visiting uh, his grandpa every year. So glad to see you again here in Estonia. Konstantin <laughs> um, is a member of the architecture, architectural collective Kultura and one of the initiators of the research project Sanatorium Premium. The focus uh, of the latter is on the Soviet area uh, recreational infrastructure and the development of its possible uses today. The sanatorium architecture of the uh, so-called Eastern Bloc has become um, um, a social media hit in recent years, viewed as an archaic curiosity with aesthetic pleasure, without delving into the role of uh, sanatoriums in the operation of large-scale industry. Or how the recreational machine worked to all of the human cogs of a uh, production machine. The uh, spatial program of any sanatorium was led by perception procedures, and uh, today's lecture asks what producers and what space would we need today to stimulate exhausted bodies and burned out minds. Do we have anything to learn from the sanatorium system in the Eastern, Eastern Bloc? Konstantin is the author of numerous publications in architecture and urbanism published over the world. And uh, he's alumnus of Strelka Institute for Media and Architecture. So please welcome, Tere Tulemas, Konstantin Budarin. Yeah, thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, it is my pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks for the invitation. I'm happy to, and it's also kind of, per, I'm happy in a personal way because I was kind of invited by my, uh, one of my um, uh, motherlands, uh, the smaller one. <laughs> so I have a small, and the, you know, <laughs> Russia. So, it's a nice, I think it's a nice combination. So, um, so for the beginning, I want to show you the video of what we made for Future Architecture Platform. I think it set up uh, the mood and it's a bit raw, but I, I like it this way. Uh, and it, it's kind of um, introduced uh, the topic and uh, what we are doing in uh, Sanatorium Premium. 
Но а санаториум премиум – это сообщество а, людей, которым не безразличны санатории, интересно тратить свои выходные на то, чтобы посещать их, изучать Это их, -style. обсуждать их, проводить Type время в этом контексте. Это Инстаграм, где появляется самый разный, но всегда посвященный санаториям контент. Вот, и это попытка наладить э, вот эту связь нас и санаториев. Страны Восточного Блока разработали собственное видение инфраструктуры отдыха. Корты и санатории были местом, где под надзором врачей при содействии климата и технологий пролетарии могли восстановить тела, чтобы вернуться к ударному строительству социализма. Представления об отдыхе нашего поколения складывались в ситуации, когда постсоветские санатории конкурировали с глобальными резортами. Отдых для нас это скорее поездка в Европу или на Бали, чем в советские санатории. Тем не менее, эта инфраструктура существует и работает. В России по-прежнему действуют более тысячи санаториев. Просто шокирующий объем и масштаб инфраструктуры, которая существует, но до недавнего времени она практически была невидимой и использовалась э, очень небольшой прослойкой. Поставить человека как можно ближе к природе, этому громадному резервуару лечебных средств, вот благородная задача, которую до сих пор не может поставить перед собой капиталистический мир. Природа в руках капиталиста превращается в нечто очень дорогостоящее, а будет момент, когда мы все будем предоставлять ее бесплатно. То есть изменилось полностью предназначение этой инфраструктуры, э, осталась только сама идея заботы. Вот это, вот это infrastructure of care, это единственное, что осталось э, релевантным. Мы уже другое общество, у нас другое производство, э, наши тела существуют и регламентированы по-другому, мы живем другими ритуалами. Обилие курортов в нашей стране и широкие возможности в области строительства обязывают наших архитекторов продолжать, руководствуясь методом социалистического реализма, неустанно совершенствовать архитектуру советских здравниц, призванных служить высокой цели – сбережения здоровья трудящихся страны социализма. Ну, санаторий, по сути, породил огромное количество квазинаучных э, каких-то экспериментов, э, связанных со здоровьем. Ну, то есть, я не могу сказать, что это все полностью антинаучно, но много инструментов, которые используются в санаториях, они вызывают вопросы. Но при этом огромное количество людей, они всем этим пользуются, прекрасно этому доверяют. Такое пространство, которое, в принципе, всегда очень любило гаджеты. И как-то если мыслить с позиции перезапуска санаториев или какой-то... Какой ну, какого-то взаимодействия с этим сообществом, в том числе людей, которые там работают, то интересно, что они вообще как бы готовы к технологическому миру и к тому, что все нужно делать при помощи гаджетов. Про preservation, что это сохранение нематериального наследия, наследия yeah. всех вот этих ритуалов, практик и переживания их, и создание группы последователей, которые могли бы дальше практиковать ядро preservation, оно может существовать с какими-то радикальными трансформациями. Одно будет подчеркивать другое. So I hope it was moody enough to introduce you to the strange and peculiar world of uh, uh, Soviet sanatoriums, which surprisingly... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so and now I feel a bit of Professor... Uh, No. <laughs> ah, okay, I see. Ouch. <laughs> it's too dark. Yeah, it's too dark, yeah. 
Yeah, so uh, San Antonio Premium is a community of people who is devoted to study, to, to visit, and to think about the possible futures of uh, this uh, heritage of uh, Soviet, uh, uh, Soviet sanatoriums. In my lecture, um, I want to give you a, a kind of uh, a glimpse of what what are they, because it's not obvious and there are m more questions than answers. Uh, I will try to conceptualize it, uh, although I don't know all the answers yet. Um, I have kind of, uh, it's more like um, I have takes on the topic, on the theme, so, uh, and I will try to share my um, understanding and my perspective on the future of this heritage. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's good to start from the beginning. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, uh, we, uh, like I with my friends, we, we were discussing a, a, a seminar on the late Soviet because we were fascinating, uh, like now in, a, in a academia through all the, the world, the, the late Soviet became a huge topic. It's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite interesting because like, the, the, like the, the time of revolution or Stalinist era is kind of the knowledge of this time is well developed and it's, it lo looks like there are not that much uh, interesting kind of um, subjects to, to, to study, but the late Soviet is still quite an enigmatic time. So we thought, and it also was a feeling like we, we kind of in Russia uh, we kind of uh, re relieve this uh, uh, time once again, this kind of zastoy uh, or time kind of uh, lo losing sense of time with the, the same president for over like a third decade or uh, so. It, uh, and the idea was, okay, um, if we wanna uh, do it, we should do it in a setting which is kind of a part of the time. So we, okay. Let's go to the sanatoria. Let's see w w what it is. So, and this was the first one. As you can see, is a humble uh, structure from 60s. Um, nothing that special um, from architectural perspective. You can see addition of our time with this welcoming and creepy uh, sign and two columns, probably ironic <laughs> in a way. <laughs> but this is this is our contribution, I guess. So, and like in the first look, no, there was no, nothing special about the place. I mean, the canteen is, I mean, at, at best you can say it's kind of a reminder of your um, kind of school childhood canteen and m maybe sometime it's nice to, to visit such a place, but actually it's, it's, it's just a facility and it's quite, difficult to understand why it's still running. But uh, 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 very fast we found what uh, uh, there is much more uh, going on. So we went on the site and uh, uh, saw this uh, structure. It's a swimming pool and it's kind of uh, an awesome, not only from outside, but also from the inside. and. And you see the kind of, uh, you kind of see immediately the luxurious uh, of this place. You know, you, you can't go to the five-star hotel, I mean, you need to go to five-star hotel to kind of uh, uh, play in a, in a swimming pool like this. But this is a less than three-star facility, you know, uh, in the middle of nowhere uh, with a, a kind of cheap uh, uh, check and so on but they have this type of infrastructure. And I'm, I mean, even more, the, the structure has kind of uh, night appearance. How much, <laughs> uh, how much architecture which you designed has this kind of nice night settings. So I thought, okay, I need to, um, to dig more to understand Okay, what is all about? Why do they have this type of beautiful structures? Why it's still running? What are, all these people are doing there? So, I, like, in in the first look, I mean, we, we wasn't the first one uh, who who decided to study uh, 
the, the theme, but uh, this image produced by uh, Miriam Amidia for her book on, on the uh, sanatoriums, it's uh, uh, my bad what I didn't uh, make a caption, but uh, uh, I like these images, but um, my problem with them what they are not explaining much. They are just enigmatic images of some kind of some kind of strange rituals. This, uh, I mean, first of all, you, you can can't understand what this machine is about because it's it's an it's a new image. It's a contemporary world. You know, 2000 uh, maybe I don't know 18, uh, uh, and the the name of the machine is a Russian lady Rosyanka, which is also. Uh, but you, you also kind of can find these kind of strange images images in the past. This one I love particularly for for its kind of Fellini. Uh, Fellini setting of you know what are they doing? Are, are they selling uh, all, all these men? Why are they in uh, window glasses? Uh, and you know you you have this kind of man in a dark suit and the lady with hair and even a military. Uh, it's just a, you know, but it's just an enigma. So you see something and it's kind of striking you and you can kind of push the like button. But uh, basically, it, it doesn't say much. It doesn't explain what it's all about. Uh, it just kind of, uh, <laughs> it, it, it is the last one. <laughs> I, I, actually, I can do it all day long, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so what this lady are, are doing here? Why are they putting this kind of neon thing in their noses? Are they kind of techno fans? Or, What's going on here? So um, I was fascinated, so I decided, OK, maybe for, for the beginning, I need to start from the origins. So OK, dictionary, words, uh, so sanatorium. Uh, what's important here is like two words uh, with uh, uh, the same meaning. So the idea behind, behind sanatoria or kurort is uh, is the place of healing. So the idea was there are some places which are able to heal. So it, it may be the place with uh, hot springs, some kind of natural mats, uh, or some just ni nice air. But the, the basic um, uh, presumption is what there are places uh, which are good for healing. It's actually quite uh, an old idea. I mean, if you go to the, the first book, uh, Vitruvius book about architecture, you will find, okay, there are good places for cities which uh, kind of heal you, which help you, and so on and so on, and there are bad places, so build your cities in a good places and don't build them. And, but okay, it's, it's, it was an old idea, and so what I have in my mind when I started the research and v uh, this type of kind of postcard, postcardish images of places which I know through Russian literature, like through, through, through the books from the, uh, the school, I, I knew what, okay, uh, some aristocrats used to go to Europe to spend some time uh, near the hot waters in places like Baden-Baden or uh, Karlovy Vary, or even like in the case of Lermontov in Pitygorsk, <laughs> not that uh, he was died there, but uh, he's, he's bad, but... Uh, uh, but uh, once again, with a closer look, uh, it was obvious what there are much more uh, things to discuss, to discover, and to think about. Uh, this is the sanatorium in, uh, in uh, Davos. Uh, and as you can see, it's uh, an elaborate structure with a lot of kind of uh, uh, balconies, kind of, uh, this kind of developed facade. Uh, quite functional in a way. And this type of uh, uh, sanatoria were prol proliferating in the end of uh, uh, 19th century, especially in, in, uh, in Davos. And they were beautifully portrayed in uh, Magic Mountain by uh, Magic Mountain novel by T Thomas Mann. Mm, but the reason why we were proliferating is uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis was the uh, uh, main reason of urban mortality probably since the uh, uh, second half of the 19th century until the end of World War II. So uh, 
from one hand it was a, a, the main reason of the, the mortality, but from the like the, the other part of the story is what nobody knew what to do with the disease. So uh, the only thing what people actually have at hand was the idea, okay, there are special places that you can go and they somehow will heal you. Uh, the sun, uh, the, the wind, uh, the, the, the air, the hygiene, uh, in this type of facilities somehow will heal you from the disease. So it was an infrastructure for, for rich, obviously. Uh, but what, uh, what, what's interesting uh, here is what those places kind of uh, took this idea of a healing place to the extreme, and uh, they uh, kind of uh, designed their buildings according to these ideas. And what they done in the end, I love this image because it shows you the flat roof, so this is the thing why... <laughs> Uh, you need to kind of uh, put your uh, eyes on uh, because this is a flat roof in Switzerland when the Le Corbusier didn't write his five uh, points of modern architecture and was still a young man. Uh, I don't actually remember when he was born, but at, at this point there is no modern architecture, but there is um, a sanatoria which looks like this. So as you can see here, is a, it's a completely uh, modern building. So with a horizontal structure on the facade, absolutely functional, it's white, so it's, it's clean. There are no uh, unfunctional details. There are no kind of, I don't know, angels, babies, like uh, in a kind of public architecture for time, for example, in Vienna. Uh, but uh, you, you, you can see a, a, a modern building. Uh, so, so what I found out was the uh, uh, sanatorium and tuberculosis was actually a big part of the agenda of the modern movement. The reason why these buildings look so kind of familiar to us because the, the roots of the modern movement actually in a way the same. They also thought about the uh, ideas how to how to innovate architecture, how to uh, find new principles, and the I ideas behind kind of new designs was basically the same. Okay, we need to bring more light exposure, we need to bring hygiene, we need to to kind of uh, create new and nicer and healthier in this sense uh, conditions to to architecture. Another example of um, not all the buildings was. Um, uh, about tuberculosis, this is the, uh, I, I, I can't, um, maybe I will pronounce it wrong, Purkersdorf uh, Sanatorium in uh, Vienna. Uh, it's an, uh, the idea about this design and this place was what the modern man uh, kind of lives uh, in a state of uh, 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 ner um, nervous pressure. So, uh, the life in the city is so stimulating, so he need to find a place to kind of calm down uh, the nerves. And the idea behind this design was to make it clean, uh, uh, erase all the details. So idea of, of this kind of process of reduction of the facade and to kind of walk in towards the modern uh, movement building was uh, to, to create a space of kind of um, which is kind of the opposite of uh, of modern city. There you can kind of calm down, calm down your nerves, and it's also uh, a place uh, there all the uh, good, nice musicians fr fr from the time uh, spent there. Uh, we can like Mahler and Schoenberg and uh, all the other guys. So and. Uh, to end up uh, this kind of uh, 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 story, uh, uh, I want to say a few things about Paimir by um, uh, Alvar Alter. Uh, Paimir is, is an uh, important example, or maybe it's uh, useful for my narrative because this is the point there, modern architecture and uh, sanatorium architecture meet, meets, uh, uh, meet together. So, uh, uh, it, uh, 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 what is good about Paimia, what, um, because of the, the, uh, 
uh, status of Alvar Alto, we know pretty much everything about this design. And uh, for Alto, uh, and we know kind of written words of Alto about, about the design. And uh, we have a lot of architectural graphics, plans, and everything. And the building, of course, itself is preserved and uh, part of the national heritage. And for, for Alto, uh, he, he was kind of uh, straightforward. Uh, for, for him, idea of this design was to build an instrument of healing. So he perceived the design, the building, as an instrument of uh, medicine. So uh, all the, the functional elements are kind of part of the healing process, like this uh, uh, rooftop uh, uh, terrace for sound buffing, which is, was a kind of main procedure during the kind of healing from tuberculosis. The, the funny, or maybe not that funny story, is what it was eventually closed uh, very soon because it was too luring to commit suicide from this uh, beautiful modern. Uh, <laughs> just, I can okay, I, I can see the point of both guys. And, but uh, <laughs> uh, I love this plan, and to to see it in a way. What uh, what what do we see here? Like we see a special uh, building, which is a medicine machine. But if you see to this, like if you think about this plan, you basically can see any modern building, like between uh, words. Like you know, functions are separated. The the building is kind of. Uh, uh, reacting to the natural environment, but not to the street. There are no facades. It's the, the design is thinking about insulation. It's uh, it's uh, it's functional in, and it's uh, much more uh, what we have like everywhere nowadays. And this is uh, Ayn Alta. She she's uh, kind of chilling on the the chair designed. Uh, by her, and it's also this chair is also was a part of a uh, kind of a medicine machine because the design behind this chair, the idea behind design is to kind of uh, open up your lungs so you can kind of uh, air more freely, so you can will, so you will cure the disease and so on and so on. But uh, it wasn't actually it wasn't true. But what is true is what these chairs. It, it's an it, it's another example. But this one uh, has the same name as the sanatoria, and uh, uh, they became the part of the like basic furniture with the their firm uh, Artec. They sold them to our modern houses. So we ba basically can buy the devices which were designed uh, specifically to cure. Uh, tuberculosis. So, uh, uh, in a, another another story, uh, which is which also kind of what I found out um, is a, a, a Röntgen X-ray technology. And uh, what I love about this image, this is actually one of the first, and maybe even the first human uh, X-ray produced uh, by by the man. And what, what what is cool about this picture, uh, it's what is obvious. It's a woman hand with a ring, and it was the the wife of Rongin. Uh, uh, maybe I'll, I'm also pronouncing his surname wrong, but so, sorry sorry for that. But um, uh, what is the point here? Uh, uh, X-ray uh, brought to the world a uh, new type of vision, and from the beginning. Uh, as it was perceived as a new type of kind of uh, uh, intimacy, you know, ability to look through the body to the kind of deeper meaning of the person. Like heroes in uh, Magic Mountain, they kind of share their X-ray images uh, to, as a kind of personal intimate gesture of closure, you know, of being close to each other. And X-ray was w widely popular, and we, we don't uh, kind of... Uh, uh, we, we, we don't remember, but it was um, till the, the first antibiotic, it wasn't much, uh, it didn't bring much help. You can see the, the disease, but okay, what next? Next, you can go to the sun and to the air and to the pine trees and 
hope for the best. <laughs> but uh, what it brought is these images. Uh, they used to kind of build this machine close to the cinema theater. So you can go your Rengen image before the cinema because it's kind of cool to see your uh, inside. And it was immediately perceived by the architecture. This is the image made by Miss uh, for the article in the magazine. The, he compares two type of uh, images of the same of the same person, and you can see immediately in architecture, or like if you look to the kind of regions of modern architecture through the X-ray eyes, you can see kind of a lot of sense. What it brought is this kind of uh, imaginary of uh, of a kind of bone structure, exposed uh, structure, and. Um, this type of images, this is also what I found, what, like, if you look to many of modern buildings in the night, <laughs> it's maybe even more kind of, uh, more right type of uh, setting for them, because they kind of exposed what is all, uh, what is all about, and how this uh, imagination was um, produced. Uh, I can't recommend you enough this book, because uh, a lot of these images I was just took from here, so, this is a great account on uh, X-ray, uh, uh, tuberculosis, and uh, other topic. How you can see the importance of um, of the disease, of designs, uh, and how it was all uh, kind of connected to the uh, creation of modern mo movement and basically architecture. What we are kind of practicing till this day, uh, but. Let's go back. So yeah, it was a short story about the the the, the beautiful past, and it's kind of uh, maybe it's uh, the the one of the main narrative of my story. It's like in the beginning you think, okay, it's it's pretty obvious. You you kind of understand what is all about, but then you dig deeper and you find immediately kind of tons of content, which uh, kind of give you an ability to explain. Uh, uh, important, important uh, matters. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, with this poster, it's a movie poster from Sergei Eisenstein movie October. Uh, I want to start my uh, short, brief uh, introduction of uh, origins of uh, Soviet sanatoria phenomena because it was obviously something new. And it, it wasn't the, the same thing as uh, kind of this uh, bourgeois, uh, expensive uh, uh, infrastructure of Davos. Uh, what uh, October, like, for, for the beginning, I think what the, the good point is to think what October brought. It was kind of a big bang uh, for, for the free time. Because it's also not that obvious uh, from our day perspective, but like in 19th century, there are no urban free time. So there are free time if you talk about aristocracy, but there are no, like workers don't have weekends. They basically work all the time when they die. This is, this is how life goes. And then like at some point you have uh, one weekend in 1917, when you have uh, two weeks uh, vacation, and then you have more and more uh, of a free time. So with, with that, the, um, the new task is, uh, arose. What should we do during this free time? What, should, what, is the Soviet, uh, what is the leisure of Soviet person? It obviously sh should be somehow more progressive, different from the, what was the leisure of the previous epochs. So, this is our propaganda poster, uh, which uh, says what the Stalin Constitution kind of gives a uh, uh, right for rest uh, for all the uh, Soviet people. It, and it was kind of a specific, uh, uh, it was a kind of a regional idea uh, in this con Constitution because they uh, emphasize right to rest, not only to have a place to live, uh, right to work, but also a uh, right to rest, and it, it was kind of um, uh, innovative. So uh, the, 
the so Soviet idea of rest is kind of uh, a par paradoxical thing because uh, uh, Soviet was suspicious about rest. You can't rest. You know, the, the, the work what is making you a Soviet citizen, what, how can you rest if you are a Soviet like this revolutionary, like born by the, the, the revolution type of uh, person. And uh, like you can see this image, is, I, I, li I like the juxtaposition be between Tsar uh, architecture on the background and this kind of organ organized man staying in the same pose so like they are collective and this is probably how they uh, imagine uh, like early days of uh, the Soviet rest. And you also can see like I also love this detail with this new Soviet furniture in the right corner. Uh, and um, so, uh, so, uh, uh, from the beginning, uh, Soviet put um, two sanatoriums as a major uh, line of the Soviet idea of leisure. There are a few, uh, few reasons you can, I, I don't know exactly the answer why it was this way, but like you can, you can guess. Like uh, the, the obvious one, sanatoriums was just cool. You know, at the moment it was the cool, cool, coolest thing on the market, so it was kind of makes sense to choose this in 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 uh, in a situation tuberculosis still was a is a huge part of the uh, urban life and still uh, still was a main reason of uh, uh, urban mortality but uh, what else is important is uh, sanatoriums are somehow scientific so so they they kind of at least they state what they know what they are doing and they kind of based their uh, uh, their approach on science, which was kind of the part of the Soviet mindset. So we don't uh, kind of uh, think about things through emotion or f through any other kind of stuff, but we, we re totally rely uh, on uh, science. Mm. But uh, also what was important, what they were able to uh, uh, create idea of a purpose because uh, they, they were able to build idea of a purpose around this kind of sanatoria uh, idea. So the narrative was like, okay, uh, the, the body of a worker need to repair, so he will be able to go back and uh, work even harder. So it was idea what, like, when you go to rest, you don't go to, to have fun or to spend time with your family. Uh, you go there alone by the prescription of a doctor, which is kind of science person, and then you go there and uh, like you have a purpose to kind of repair your body to bring back better, stronger, uh, more effective, and uh, go back to the uh, uh, building of uh, uh, communism. So uh, by, 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 by this narrative, they somehow, at least in their minds, kind of designed, okay, we, we found our solution, we found our approach, which is kind of smells like a revolutionary approach to the uh, leisure. But at the same time, uh, the paradox was what the people didn't want to kind of sp spend their time in, the, in their leisure days, um, uh, uh, just uh, kind of uh, going through the regime prescriptions and doing exercises they uh, want to con consume. And uh, from the beginning, it was a problem, like uh, they, they were kind of, uh, there are two, two mainstreams, like from, from narrative or from ideological perspective, it's all about the repair, it's about the regime, but from the perspective on of institutions and the people, it's about consumption, it's about having a good time, it's about kind of visiting nice places, so uh, it was a it was a kind of contradiction of the whole idea from the v very beginning, and I don't remember why I put this image here, but <laughs> this is a sanatoria in uh, in Sochi. It's also I thought. The, Maybe it's also nice to say a few, a few words about the 
what I also like about Sanatorias and the idea of uh, kind of free time architecture is what free time is not kind of set. You, you don't know actually what is the free time and how architecture of free time should look like. So uh, to study it is a, it's a great topic to study uh, not, only, not, not only because you can kind of rest while doing it, but also because um, it's kind of a dreamland because each new regime is able to kind of create its own uh, image or vision of what uh, uh, infrastructure of re rest uh, looks like. Because like if you, if you kind of study design of um, nuclear power plants, there are some kind of r rules or, I mean, the design is just makes sense, but leisure infrastructure doesn't make any sense. It can kind of go, uh, to this kind of crazy, uh, uh, crazy type of facilities like this one in uh, Sochi. So, what is um, what is also in interesting about the, and what is specifically Soviet about the phenomenon? It's uh, uh, it's what it lasted till the end, and it's still actually it's still going on uh, till our days. Um, uh, it's uh, it's strange because in in the fifties, like so, Soviet was wasn't the only country who built this type of facilities. But the reason uh, places like Davos developed these facilities was tuberculosis, and in fifties the first antibiotic penicillin was invented and humanity find out what this is the, the solution. We don't, we don't need to build uh, like huge buildings in mountains with uh, elaborated balconies to heal the disease. We need a lot of penicillin and this is how we deal with a, uh, with a, with a disease. But uh, the, the Soviet uh, didn't stop uh, to produce these buildings. And also, what is also important of the late Soviet period is what the, like if you count the amount of infrastructure, the most of it was built at this time. Because I show you just a few examples of Sochi architecture. It was the grand project of Stalinist era, the, the favorite one, the main one. But they, in the end, they built the infrastructure which were able to kind of uh, bring maybe 10,000 people in the country of, uh, in a season, in a country of uh, 200 million people. So most of, uh, most of the infrastructure were, were built in the late Soviet uh, period. Uh, and it's, it's um, worth to kind of look to, to it closer. It's, uh, it's also important to mention what uh, like today, when we go to, to places like this, we kind of dealing with the uh, heritage of 80s, uh, not uh, 50s. I mean, in terms of architecture, of course, you can say, okay, this is a building from 50s, but you, can't, you don't find the kind of military uh, people who is kind of uh, having the rest there. I mean, you, don't, you will not find the factory, you know, you know the, the atmosphere, or kind of in institutional meaning of those places at, at um, early days. You will find the same spirit as in any kind of Soviet sanatorium. So what was going on in, uh, uh, in the 60s? Like, uh, as I mentioned, the, the idea to heal with the building uh, or to heal people through the building wasn't uh, popular and the kind of new type of Soviet uh, people appeared um, after the war. And they were like everybody else in the, in the West or in the East. They, they didn't want to spend their time separately. They didn't want to kind of go through the procedures. They, they wanted to go to the seaside to, to change pla places uh, during their vacation, to meet new pe people, to have an affair, and uh, so on and so on. And this is why I'm showing you this image, is a, a movie, Three Plus Two. It's about the three guys who went to a seaside and met two girls. So there is already kind of a, a problem in this equitation. 
but it's it's about an affair and it's also kind of funny but the there is one guy who is kind of scientist and his character is kind of a voice of the previous kind of conception of what rest should be because he is annoyed by the idea what the they need to share the same spot with uh, two girls he didn't want to uh, to kind of interact with uh, with them and he he kind of uh, b b based his arguments on science when the other guys uh, are, are totally based their kind of uh, actions on the emotion and his kind of uh, connection modern version of the kind of old uh, soviet uh, narrative so 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 the problem with uh, with the 80s and in general with the, the, the whole infrastructure which is still kind of uh, exists. Um, the, the, I'll show you this image too. <laughs> it's, I'm going to speak for a while, it's just better. Mm. Uh, the problem is how to explain the images like this. What is it? I mean, this is kind of extravagant Trump Donald Trump type of architecture. Like, and if I look to the history of architecture, the, the closest example I can get is the villa, which is famous through Big Lebowski movie as a house of Jackie Trehorn, uh, famous porn king. Mm. What was going on in the mind of architects and in the people who built this, um, these golden uh, pyramids? For, for the people uh, and uh, um, why they did it. And um, although the, the whole idea wasn't that kind of uh, uh, reasonable at all, because like the, the medical uh, knowledge behind the sanatoria was already kind of crushed by the antibiotics. So you can, of course you can still like to, to, to drink mineral water, but you don't build palaces around it anymore because it's it's just not the thing. You can build a palace around the uh, penicillin to ma make make much more sense. But to 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 make a take on on the situation, um, I like to refer to the Alexei Yurchak um, uh, book. Everything was forever until it was no more. Mm. It's a kind of influential study, and it's also one of the books in this study of late Soviet, uh, important one. If you want to read one, start from, from here. Uh, uh, one of the ideas of, um, uh, which Yurchak introduced in this book is, um, in Russian it, it, it calls the but in, in, in English it can be... Um, something like being out. The, the idea is what um, uh, there are certain, certain freedom in the a, in a late Soviet time uh, which were kind of constructed in a peculiar way. Uh, the idea was like while you kind of doing all the rituals you need to do, like going to the first uh, meeting on 1st of May or kind of going to the meetings in your workplace and uh, re re reproduce the rhetorics of the past, you can basically do, uh, you can have um, much, uh, kind of a lot of personal freedom or, or freedom of your kind of personal life or even in, in your collective life. So, and he, he showed in the book plenty examples of it, but uh, I think it's also possible to, uh, to see uh, like uh, late Soviet infrastructure of uh, sanatoria through these eyes. It's kind of, uh, 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 these designs, they all about, from one hand, um, be, being with the line with this kind of born in a revolutionary times rhetoric of sanatoria, from one hand, but from another hand, it's kind of, it can be a place of architectural extravaganza or experiments, or actually, uh, it can be not sanatoria at all if you look closer, but till the moment you kind of have this sign, you repeat these words, you can kind of go and do whatever you want. And this is like probably architect 
wanted to build a golden pyramid. So <laughs> the way he did it, this is sanatoria, okay, this is the money. Um, uh, in, other, in another beautiful example we found in uh, Pushina, which is a scient scientist city close to Moscow, actually quite has a kind of Estonian touch. Uh, and feel a bit like Estonia. Uh, but um, what is this uh, uh, glass, uh, glass structure is a, is, a, uh, is a glass house on the roof of one of the uh, building. And the, they used to grow up uh, vegetables in, in, on this roof. And this is kind of, from one hand, it's a, it's, it's a cool idea. I mean, you have a greenhouse on, on the roof of your building. But the problem is like they, they have a, just like a field just beyond the, the, the wall structure. So it was a uh, kind of a strange and difficult way to produce uh, vegetables, but it was possible since it's a sanatoria. So basically, uh, somehow it's necessary to do it this way. Okay, you, you can do it this way. Uh, uh, sanatoriums also was a place, like in terms of architecture, it was a place of uh, a lot of uh, freedom, and from architectural perspective, it was uh, one of the best jobs to go to institute who is dealing with the uh, design of uh, court and sanatoria because you can kind of you can do a lot of um, individual projects, uh, and you can kind of um, uh, do things you you, you think is a. Uh, 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 you, you believe is uh, necessary. A lot of Soviet architects um, believed what um, Louis Kahn is necessary for the, uh, for the <laughs> another example of a bit of Estonian. Like this red one is also kind of a Kahnish type of, of, of a building. Uh, and yeah, like this is this is the last one, uh, but I want to go to a bit to show you a bit more of uh, this uh, and to, to 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 talk a bit for Ilya Chernyavsky. Uh, Ilya Chernyavsky was a chief of one of the uh, departments of Kurov Project, which is an institute for kind of crea creation of design for sanatoria and uh, Kurovs and so on and so on. And he was kind of uh, quite prolific, built a lot of. Um, kind of realized a lot of big uh, projects, uh, one of which is uh, uh, Voronova. It's a, a sanatorium uh, designed for Gosplan. Gosplan is a, uh, was an uh, 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 economical department of Soviet Union, so, so the guys who, who designed the plan for, for the um, economy, like, like the guys who count uh, everything. So uh, the, the new structure appeared in a, a kind of old setting. The, the plot existed from, I think, from 16th century, like there is an English park and, uh, and, uh, and the lake and so on, and there is even a palace and some, some architectural heritage on the site. Uh, the thing itself in its kind of in, in drawing look like this, and then, and uh, when it built, it looked like this. The the idea of of the design and the innov innovation of uh, the design is um, this kind of uh, uh, complex. You know, the head of the worm. Uh, it's kind of dune uh, type of uh, type of building. Uh, I, and the idea of uh, Chernyavsky was to uh, not to separate uh, different public functions because it's, they used to kind of uh, build them in uh, separate blocks and connect them with galleries so you can kind of go from one part of the building to another and not go to the street level So because it's a kind of still a healing place. Uh, but his idea was to just to smash them into this kind of huge uh, giant uh, head and has an kind of an enormous atrium and the in the beginning in in the middle of of a, a structure creating this kind of even a te templeish type of um, 
uh, filling. So on this section, like, I mean, you can find a lot of uh, 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 sources of uh, his um, uh, inspiration. <clears throat> uh, but I think the, the main one uh, is this. So uh, the, the uh, Ranchamp uh, Chapel by Corp, and I mean, Konstantin Melnikov wrote what the, the, this small windows was actually introduced to Corbusier in Moscow, which is probably not that true, but uh, another example, like on the right you have uh, uh, Voronova, and on the left, uh, High Sophia, obviously. Mm. But what I want to say here about, um, uh, I like the, the, to compare these two uh, places because like when I first visited the sanatoria, I, ha I have the same feeling, feeling what I have uh, in uh, High Sophia. And it was not only because of the uh, kind of uh, similarities in the setting and, uh, and the, the idea of this kind of light, uh, uh, light windows, but it also was a, a feeling of kind of vast, uh, empty uh, 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 space covered with marble, uh, sense of kind of uh, ritual, and the sense of actually the closed uh, closed club. So it's, it doesn't feel like this kind of decent uh, public building for Soviet people who is kind of dealing with their bodies. It feels like expensive, Close territory, and what I eventually fo fo found out, what um, it w actually it was this way. So it was a uh, closed sanatorium, and it was even close to the uh, uh, employees of Gosplan. Uh, it was used only by top uh, officials, so it actually has this kind of corporative uh, sense of corporative uh, nature, like uh, actually the High Sophia also. Uh, thus, then you kind of study how they okay they they bring Vasilevs here and these guys go there. You know you, you see the 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 whole corporation of uh, uh, Constantinople through the through the design. So they you, you use uh, this building as a as a cl closed country club for top officials and the families of those officials used to live there all the time. So the guys can just go by for, for a weekend. And it's also one of the examples of what um, a lot of was possible till the moment you call it uh, in the right way uh, sanatoria. But in fact, it was a place of this kind of, um, oh, a couple more images. I like the left one because I was kind of curious why this is, I was trying to, to, to set some revolutionary words, but uh, eventually I found out that this is a structure not for the uh, speeches, but for the television. They have a TV set there, and they used to go all, <laughs> and like in a, it's kind of image of psychiatric clinic and from Hollywood movies, I don't know. Yeah, and it's also the, the idea of this, like, uh, like kind, kind of uh, Chernyavsky understanding of, of space is much more about this kind of theatrical uh, play with uh, light, with kind of creating this kind of dense uh, multifunctional space with different sounds and different kind of um, emotions. It's much more about uh, theater than it's about health or dealing with uh, healing. So, um, I'm kind of going to bring a, a conclusion. Uh, I don't, don't actually know what is what is the conclusion, but I need to say something about the future. But I will not kind of show much because, I mean, it's what is good about past. There are images. It's easier to tell stories about past. Mm. But uh, what's, what's, this is a, another work of um, Ilya Chernyavsky. It's also, you, you can see this kind of, his desire to melt everything down to create this kind of head of a worm. Uh, so what is interesting about this infrastructure mm, is what is, it's still there. 
which is it's quite amazing because uh, it's it's still it's in the decay, but most of the building wasn't closed after the kind of 90s. They still somehow running. Uh, right now, the problem is what the uh, the way they run the the places is uh, through the state vouchers. So. If you are kind of senior person, you can receive this kind of cheap, uh, cheap trip uh, to the sanatoria. And the approach of the uh, kind of guys who and girls who who run uh, the places is to bring as many these cheap visitors and as possible, and to neglect any kind of uh, infrastructural needs of the building. So. It's kind of um, the way how how to run and not to close it, but you kind of able to ma maintain uh, the, the structure, but you're not able to invest in it to attract new visitors. And like it's uh, uh, one of my friends of my friends said, but it's like a, a plane with only a kind of cheap tickets, so they they not diverse, and it's kind of. Um, uh, uh, bring all this kind of decay, but the good thing is they are still there. And to going back to uh, these two ladies, uh, what is uh, what I also found uh, fascinating is what okay infrastructure is there. The the I mean they already kind of spent the capex. Like if you if you if you have an experience with dealing with uh, uh, infrastructure for. Uh, leisure or for rest or for, for hotels, you will Im immediately find out what the the costs are the main thing. So why they why we don't build these build big buildings anymore? Why everything is kind of with the same facade because of the costs. So, uh, but what is amazing? What we already have this kind of huge uh, investment. It was already made. So, so the buildings are already there. There are roads, like there are pipes and on the ground. There are swimming pools, like I showed in the in the beginning. And it's also I'm not kind of um, uh, I'm not nostalgic about this heritage at all. I don't. I, I'm not nostalgic about Soviet Union or something uh, like this. I just. Uh, 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 I'm curious about the phenomena, and I also see the potential of this uh, existing infrastructure. And if you kind of check uh, what is the kind of modern uh, or like from my childhood idea of a retreat, uh, and to kind of put it vice versa, the idea of what sanatoria, at least and in the mind of the um, kind of its, its creators. Uh, uh, it kind of makes sense, you know, especially with the COVID, we found, okay, it's m maybe it's a good thing to have a local infrastructure uh, for leisure. Maybe it shouldn't be all abroad. Maybe the, the borders can be closed. It's also, I think it's also, it will be a big topic for the future to uh, perceive uh, rest not only as a kind of separate deal, uh, separate uh, from your work, but as a part of your work, because, uh, like at least at, at my kind of through through my friends, I see this kind of desire to uh, uh, to kind of find the balance between uh, life and work, and to kind of uh, not to mm, the idea of uh, right of to rest is not that. Uh, uh, Strange and kind of uh, um, it's uh, it's also uh, it's also I think it's also uh, like um, actually I can explain what these two ladies are are doing. It's um, uh, they are kind of trying to bring some sun to their noses uh, because they stick to this idea what sun can heal, but. Uh, if you stick long enough to the idea, you can kind of bring it to the this this type of extent. Uh, but uh, although uh, uh, I, I I don't really believe in uh, um, uh, sanatorium uh, technologies, uh, but I do believe in science, 
And I think it's now it's a really good time to, to bring back this kind of scientific approach to the bodies, to the rest. Because like in like last 10 years, it was a revolution in, a, in a, our ability to kind of grab new knowledge. Because now like you, you're able to just kind of read Lancet in, in, a, uh, in a, your laptop which wasn't that easy like 20 years ago. And like a lot of new uh, kind of uh, professionals appeared in the field who is uh, based their idea of what to eat, how to rest, uh, how to exercise, uh, how to heal on the science knowledge. And it, it became much more widespread. So this kind of, it's a kind of a growing uh, uh, market. And, uh, of course, the, the health is also uh, is, a, is a huge part. You know, health obviously can be a part of the so the idea to uh, uh, to build uh, leisure infrastructure on the idea of health is uh, uh, absolutely fine and valuable. And there is also a huge market, so it's possible to kind of uh, move in this direction. And of course, the regime is. I mean, it's the the one of the self-help <laughs> one-to-one uh, ideas, like like if you kind of found uh, found a silly Instagram about how to live a better life, you will probably hear thing number two, uh, number one is uh, you need to kind of when to sleep in the same time. This is this is the way of, but. Uh, although it's, it, it sounds silly, but uh, w what's important is what it's a part of our kind of modern language. So the idea of a regime, is, it's not like annoying, but it's somehow a bit cool. <laughs> uh, so uh, what I'm trying to say here, what, um, uh, although um, sanitariums maybe wasn't this thing at all, but in terms of idea and in terms of culture and maybe in terms of people who works, uh, who, who, who is working there, the idea of what we need to heal people with uh, science and gadgets is totally okay. This is what they actually do still this day. And uh, uh, I, I think the this infrastructure can be rethinked, rebuilt and can be, uh, it, it has a, it has a potential to be a part of the future, but not only of the past. So. Thank you. Thank you, Constantine, so much. It's time for questions. <laughs> Let's open the discussion. So, um, as you said, it is still quite popular nowadays to go to sanitariums in Russia, right? So, for those who go there, do you know uh, what are the emotions and experience? Is it a lot of nostalgia? Is it just like everyday you know, healing place? Or is there still some uh, futuristic aspect as well because of the gadgets and stuff? Uh, it, it depends, like, uh, uh, for, um, as I said, like, uh, there are some places which are run by this kind of state vouchers, mm -hmm. and we've been in a place uh, in, uh, beyond the Polish circle, in a place called Apatite, uh, and uh, uh, what we found there is um, uh, what elderly who came there, they don't actually want to go there, and they don't like the place. But they have a choice to, to go there or to stay at home. So uh, uh, this is a kind of, I think maybe this is a majority uh, of the users. But you also have a places like Goranova, um, uh, which is still the sanatorium of, uh, now it's not a ghost plan, it's some, some kind of ministry of economics or something. But, it's, uh, but it's still, it's not that prestigious anymore. So the main guys probably now go to Switzerland, but other employees of Gosplan used to spend time there. They brought families and kids, and so it's 
totally totally fine institution with nice healthcare facility, which is not a kind of sanatorium one, but uh, with real doctors. So you really can kind of receive a, a heal there. So it 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 really depends. Yeah, but maybe this is yeah maybe this is two main conditions like state vouchers uh, or this kind of club type of connected to some some department or ministry or something. Yeah, but um, nostalgia. I don't know. Uh, maybe I mean you can say like okay, uh, if people from my uh, generation go there, they just l love to see how it look. You know. To, to make images, but it's a, it's also not it's not a nostalgia. We, I, we don't care about. It. I mean, we're not connected. I, I don't remember anything. I, I didn't have. Um, I don't have an experience in my childhood, so it's not it's not nostalgic, I guess. Thank you, Konstantin. A very interesting lecture. I was wondering about the new functions of those buildings. Have you come across with something that really fits there? Or what, what is the, the program that is fitting to this kind of, um, uh, yeah, this kind of uh, structures that have a lot of, um, um, that have a, have a lot of uh, different spatial qualities? Because I, I was just thinking that is there like a typology, a standardized typology for sanatoriums that would be repeated throughout the um, Soviet Union that we had with most of the other uh, programs, right? With uh, apartment buildings, uh, cinemas, etc. So, I mean, it, every time it was sort of a masterpiece. And, and I, I wonder if there has been a, a program, a new program that is fitting there, and you actually notice that it could function. It reminds me one of the in Vienna. There's a Prater sauna. It's an old public sauna that was turned into a nightclub, and then so yeah. now you can dance in those empty pools, and then acoustically it sort of works because you have a bigger open space, but you have this uh, lower down uh, dance floors that um, that. Um, yeah, manage it somehow. Of course, it's really dangerous for parties to have this kind of um, uh, big falls. But uh, but other than that, I haven't come across with anything that the, that the new program could actually work in the old structure of sanatorium. Um, I have few few stories. <laughs> so the first one, like uh, the reason why we went to Apatite was um, a prominent Russian TV person, Andrei Malakhov, which is kind of Russian opera, Winfrey. He bought a sanatorium. Uh, he did it because he, he has a uh, collection of art, of contemporary art, and he started the uh, institution. And since he is, uh, uh, was born in Apatite, and he, this is his home time, uh, town, he decided, OK, I will kind of bring my collection, collection there and bring a new institution to the city which is a nice thing to do. Uh, so w what he found out in the city was there are no buildings to buy, and there are no construction materials. <laughs> so you're not able to just build there, because it's beyond the polar circle, and there are no, they, they just don't build anymore. It's a nice city, actually. So, so somehow, the, 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 the only building he was able to buy was the sanatoria. So now, it's going to be sanatorium and the contemporary art center. <laughs> so you never know. This is the one story. <laughs> and actually, this is what I mean. It's kind of my dream of what, what, is, what we should do, kind of push to the extreme. Like, because basically, uh, my point is what the, the idea of rest based on the uh, idea of healing technology and science is totally fine. I mean, you need just to reintroduce new technologies to the place, to kind of reinvent it, uh, maybe culturally, uh, reinvent the um, model of the place financially, and it's it's totally it's, it's totally fine. Um, like uh, about um, special conditions, I mean, UK obviously say what the uh, like special conditions, what the rooms are not that big and the public spaces are waste. So, but I mean, it's, um, it's 
I mean, I think it's 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 a big problem if you want to build something new like this because you will have this unimaginary nowadays costs. But if you want to kind of run uh, hotel which also has a, a cinema kind of uh, space for 500 people for some crazy reason, <laughs> like Burano with us, I mean, it's uh, like it's talent scale infrastructure, you know, kind of capital scale infrastructure. Well, somehow they has it. But I mean, I don't know how much they spent on the heating, but I don't think it's that much. So you can just enjoy, I mean, like the swimming pool in uh, the first first one. It's, uh, I mean, it's just awesome. You, you, it's not possible to build these things anymore, but it's definitely, you can just enjoy and run them. Uh, I mean, I'd love to run this golden pyramid of Donald Trump fish. Why not? Maybe, maybe it should be New Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, it has a similar quality, special quality that they want to push to extreme. And uh, are really articulated and different from each other. But yeah, interesting. Yeah, so so uh, this is my kind of, uh, we can talk about heritage in, uh, you know, in a nostalgic term or our kind of sensitivity to, towards past. But we also can be rough, tough kind of, this is, can be a story about costs. These costs are made. And what is valuable, it's what these type of structures are not possible anymore. Mm. You can put all the hotels built in Estonia in the last 20 years, and you will see small, more or less the same type of structures. I mean, it's the same uh, for Russia, because I, 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 I work in, a, like in my daytime job in a consulting, so I saw the, the models, it's, not, it's just not possible. Because if you bring, it's, a, it's not that marginal business. So if you bring a bit of kind of higher cost, you just ruin the whole thing. So, so the big chance uh, for us, I believe, is to kind of reimagine those places, which is already there. I mean, because like for example, the cost of one kilometer of road is it's, it's the cost of kind of nice hotel. The roads are extremely uh, expensive. So if you have a place with a road and with a pipes and with a, I mean, just let's do something which is better than just maintenance and sadness and Uh, the question is, uh, I'm not sure, quite sure how it's uh, in Russia with the courts, but in the 80s, 70s in Estonia, it was also a trend to have those uh, campings uh, at the sanatoriums and the courts, like small huts uh, for three to people, uh, which is quite like individual and unusual for the uh, regime idea. So I'm wondering what your in your opinion is it was like a trend or this some like mirroring something else like some change of the idea what was the reason for that yeah um i know what, what is the reason for this type of structures right now uh because this is the just money making i mean it's the easiest way to okay you have a structure okay let's build some small cheap houses close by and we'll also uh, kind of rent them, but in a, in the Soviet time, I don't know. But uh, I think what there is all this was the this, the sense of contradiction. Like, uh, f for example, uh, to receive a Putyovka, you wasn't able to receive it uh, with your family, which kind of uh, like especially in the beginning. Uh, but a lot of people wanted to uh, go to the vacation with the family, so. So uh, I think they built, just kind of built additional infrastructure to uh, to kind of uh, eliminate those contradictions of the kind of original vision. But I, actually, I don't know. Like, I don't know exact answer. Thank you, Rusia. Uh, there is an extremely rich resort architecture in Crimea. 
What's going on there nowadays? <laughs> um, actually, um, I don't. I, I don't really know. But um, we tried to kind of connect to uh, uh, Druzhba uh, Centrum. You know this uh, this round structure on the cantilever, kind of crazy. It's uh, built also designed by Igor Vasilevsky, the, the same guy who worked with Ilya Chernyavsky on Voronova. So, and uh, my feeling, what the easiest way to kind of talk to these people is just go there, go to their cabinet and uh, just have a conversation. You, it's kind of a, in another country. You can just reach people by phone. They have their own vibe there. So, uh, so in this sense, uh, it's just like just the general condition of the uh, site. It's just strange, so they, I don't know. So it's now, it's not Ukraine, not actually the Russia, so. Um, but how the Moscow what? I think it, it's more or less the same as it was. I mean, everybody loved Crimea. A lot of people used to go there and still go there. So I never been there. So for me, it's tricky. So but, I mean, if I if I'll have a good reason to go to Crimea, I will. But if I don't, uh, I will. Oh no, I probably choose another direction. So, but I don't think what that much changed for for Russians. I mean, people who used to go to Crimea, they still go to Crimea. Speaking again of um, Estonian sanatoriums, let's say, um, when the campsites were mentioned, specific one that came to mind was uh, in Uskula. Uh, there was um, um, kind of a holiday center. Maybe it could be considered a resort, maybe not. But uh, me and my family spent uh, a lot of summers in the area, and I kind of watched the actual kind of hotel main resort building crumble, uh, literally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it fell apart until it was knocked down. And it also had um, kind of a campsite extension, and some pr uh, more private houses, uh, th not private in the sense that they were owned privately, but um, there were separate kind of houses as some of the options where to stay in that. And interestingly, uh, the only thing that actually survived were those separate houses and um, campsite grounds, because uh, somehow this is um, the main thing that stayed relevant these days. And I'm thinking maybe this uh says something about the kind of architecture of the buildings themselves. Perhaps kind of the way in the, which they were built um, are kind of no longer that functional for the ways that um, our psychology works now. Um, people might be preferring to stay in kind of more isolated private houses or kind of have their more space in the wild rather than a more congested kind of um, yeah. strange building. Uh, actually, I know the place. My grandfather used to work there, and he has a house and lived nearby, so I spent a lot of summers just nearby the place and saw how it kind of, its best days and its worst days. So, but now I think it's just a big, big structure, and at some point, uh, it wasn't, the structure wasn't able to attract visitors anymore. One of the reasons I discussed like in 2013 with Ayat Adler, I believe, was what the, at some point the seaside became much more a cool thing in Estonia. So it's also kind of, uh, for, for big structures it's difficult uh, to attract people. And if your main attraction isn't the like healing function or something, but the Pepsi like uh, site and pine trees, you compete with other places. And then you have a cheap flight ticket, so you compete with the all of the world. So it, I, I think it was just, uh, just a moment. 
when it kind of perceived kind of uh, heritage of the Soviet time, big structure, not that popular lake anymore, and so on. Because if you go to the, the Uskula, uh, you, can see, you can say the same about the kind of summer houses. Because when I was a kid, they were kind of cool summer houses. But they all the same, there are not that much new construction, and it's visible what kind of the, the whole site is in decay because it's just not that popular anymore. So, yeah. Спасибо за лекцию. Thank you for lecture. And uh, I have a question about COVID. Do, uh, did the situation changed with uh, COVID because people can go abroad? I don't know uh, when you have a trip, uh, the time with uh, yeah. COVID and or not. I mean, it, it was controversial because the uh, for example, from one hand, the uh, in, in country tourism in Russia was kind of flourishing, but in the beginning it was kind of all, uh, all new set of rules. Like if you want to go there, you need special kind of you need to visit a doctor, and nobody knew how to deal with it. So especially in the beginning, it was messy for this kind of spaces of mass uh, rest. And maybe they lose something, but now I think it's it's okay. And yeah, of course, like if the whole country is not able to uh, go abroad, uh, um, infrastructure is in use. But yeah, yeah, especially for places on the seaside. So for for places like in Apatiti, I think it's more or less the same old people uh, who kind of uh, receiving their vouchers, so they go there. I'm just curious to um, ask about the heritage protection in Russia, um, especially if we're talking about the sanatorium architecture. How is the position of the protection of those marvelous buildings? Uh, I think um, the, the like late Soviet buildings are not preserved because like most of them are too young. They not uh, reached like 50 or 60 years, I don't remember. Uh, I believe what uh, sanatoriums in Sochi they they preserved and uh, like built which one built in 30s and 40s, but because it's uh, the whole city is kind of lived by their uh, rest culture, so there are people who is able to kind of create a movement to protect. Yeah, so I think it depends, uh, but like. But there are no, I would say, there are no uh, kind of general understanding what this is kind of something special and we need to treat it in a special way and we need to protect it. Because, I mean, it's easier to protect things when they are in capital, uh, but then they are spray, spread out or, or they are in the natural site. You just don't see what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So if it will be removed, you will, I mean, it's not a... Central streets, so okay. it's more complicated, I guess. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, Constantine. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.